Here we go into breakpoint day three and breaking down a lot of news on the Solana ecosystem. We'll be diving in deep to some interesting advancements around Solana. You guys don't want to miss this. We got a bunch of clips for you and uh, it's going to save you a lot of time. So stick around. My name is Paul Vera. Welcome back into TechPath. Let's just start off. If you have not seen some of our Solana videos here this week and the reason we're putting so many of these out, just so if you're new to the channel, maybe you're new to crypto. Solana has this massive event called Breakpoint every year, and it's where all of the advancements, all the ecosystems come, and everybody's really kind of dropping a lot of new stuff. With that, we've had uh, three videos out here, so you'll be able to see this third one here, but go over to our YouTube page and just click on the Solana blockchain playlist, and you can kind of pick up uh, where, you know, maybe you're behind. So anyway, let's kick off to this first clip here. And I want to go into this around the Star Atlas update. So take a look. So the big feature release of 2.2 is a competitive combat ground racing course. With 2.2, you're going to have access to ship configuration on-chain, ship mastery on-chain, and character progression, or XP systems, fully on-chain. This creates massive opportunity for creators to customize, mint, and sell their own skins. A Star Atlas is going to be one, I think, one of the major game breakouts for Web3. You can kind of see it in their graphics, but they've got a lot happening here. I want to go over to this next clip talking about the mobile app. Listen in. So Star Atlas Crew is a fitness trainer and a little variation of the move to earn genre. You can walk, run, cycle, level up your crew members, and collect loot along the way. Pretty unique, pretty unique. And I, you know, the creativity that they've continued to build into the ecosystem there, I think is pretty good. This is Michael Wagner there on screen, in case you don't know the CEO of Star Atlas. He's been on our show before. We're probably going to get him back because it's a lot happening right now. Let's go over to the Crew Packs clip. This will explain it a little bit further. Listen in. So today, I'm very excited to announce the up-and-coming recruitment packs. These come in sets of five with rarities, traits, and characteristics. Uh, and beyond crew members, these are also going to serve as your Star Atlas PFP. And don't worry for you guys that already have ships with crew members on them. You'll be getting some crew packs as well. Speaking of PFPs, during, during Breakpoint, there was a lot of activations that were happening in Amsterdam. This is one of them by Repost Coffee. So you'll be able to actually get an, a PFP right there. You can kind of see it on your latte. So very cool uh, stuff out there for sure. All right, so jumping over here to uh, back to Atlas, and this is going more on the multiplayer by Metagravity. Listen in. What I also didn't mention is that we're adding full multiplayer support uh, with the R2.2 release. Now, and what you're about to see, this is very hot off the presses. The current milestone that we wanted to present is around the 30,000K stress test that we did. Woo! Woo! These guys are really, I think, leveling up the game uh, development for sure in terms of Web3 and maybe setting the standard for what we'll see in the future around a lot of these projects that are going out. I want to go to another clip here. Uh, this is talking about game shift, and this could have a pretty big impact on Immutable X. So if you guys are, you know, IMX fans, this is one clip you want to watch. Listen in. Going and finding the vendors, knowing what questions to ask, doing the diligence, doing the contracting, getting them all to work together, and so on and so forth, was almost as difficult or more difficult than just going and building it themselves. And so what we discovered is there was a gap here. And so this is why we built GameShift. And what this allows is for developers to bring blockchain into their game without any blockchain programming experience. We knew we could achieve this by building a walled garden or a closed ecosystem and just doing this in a private way. For a number of reasons, we decided that did not make sense. 
And so we've retained in the product the ability for players to move assets out into the broader ecosystem. And where we've been able to, we've integrated on the back end with existing uh, protocols and dApps to make sure that this is as open of an ecosystem as possible. Developers never need to have a developer wallet. Users never have to have a, their own wallet coming in. No one has to deal with soul tokens. No one has to pay gas fees. And no one has to manage keys. We take care of all of that in the back end. We're working with MetaKeep for uh, their amazing self-custody wallets. They're super smooth for users. Working with CrossMint for their uh, compressed NFT minting. We're working with CoinFlow for fiat payments acceptance. Meanwhile, we had a developer build a demo game for us, and I was speaking with him the other night, and he said it took him one hour to integrate all the blockchain features of GameShift, to give you a sense. And so with that, I'm extremely proud to announce that GameShift is now in open beta. Yeah. This to me is probably one of the bigger announcements because it does create a new evolution of how devs will be able to kind of engage with what's happening in Web3. Speaking of that, here's Neon EVM. Uh, this is a good example of projects that are starting to leap forward from Ethereum into the Solana ecosystem. So I've got a clip for you that kind of explains this a little bit further. Let's go to that one. On the Solana, we have Neon EVM program. It's a smart contract and it will process your transaction. You can deploy any contract, any source code, which can be compiled by any compiler from Ethereum ecosystem. And Ethereum ecosystem has a lot of compilers like Solidity, like Viper, like U, U+, Hub, Fay, and others. You can get uh, database feeds from Chainlink, which is working on the Solana. And uh, on this uh, slide, you can see the wide range of development tools from the Ethereum ecosystem, which can be used on the Solana. And I'm happy to announce today that Neon EVM signed a partnership with the bridge. Neon EVM will be connected to other EVM chains, like Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, and others. All right, so essentially think ETH apps on Solana, that's kind of the connection point here. Neon, if you're following it over on CoinMarketCap, you can kind of see the quick move here that's happening within that. So this is a good example of how some of this innovation is affecting different uh, projects out there, obviously from you know a financial side of things. This year has surprised me in terms of breakpoint. And I think if you've been following Sol up the charts here recently over the past few days, but these are the kind of advancements I think that are really matter in moving Web3 forward, but also just moving the ecosystem of what's happening in blockchain. This is a clip on Solana Bolt. Listen in to this. Today we are introducing a new framework for on-chain games. There are frameworks that try to simplify the developer experience, but the fundamental trait of that every single one of these framework is doing is they're compromising performance to composability. We're incredibly excited to present Bolt, which is a high-performance and composable SVM-based on-chain framework. Bolt is modular. Now. What this allows to unlock is really uh, to have a full new category of games uh, being uh, built on the blockchain. So you can have low latency, high throughput games, as you would with a traditional multiplayer game server, but still being able to compose with everything that is available on, on, uh, on, on the layer. One unified ecosystem, everyone enriching a single state machine. <laughs> All right, so a lot happening there. You guys will probably look back on this and maybe if you're watching this in the future and going, wow, this was happening back in 2023 and all of this innovation around game, uh, gaming on the blockchain started then. That's a good example of this. Here's Star Atlas kind of talking a little bit further around fully on-chain gaming. Listen in. So Sage or Star Atlas Golden Era is a browser-based real-time strategy game. When I say RTS, I do mean reading and writing to Solana in real time. This was very simple. It was fully on chain movement and coordinate system. The result of all of that, this data is actually a little bit outdated just in the last week, but we've done over 30 million transactions on Solana since September, making up between 10 and 15% of the total Solana network transaction volume on any given day. But the future of Sage is 3D. Uh, we're calling that release Starbased. Now we can take a look at what we have in store for you. Every single action you saw in that demo is executed on Solana. 
And that is a, a big statement because what you're seeing happening right now is going to translate to other industries. It's going to translate to payments, it's going to translate to securities, all sorts of things that we'll start to see being used within the Solana ecosystem. So this may be the very first of the front of what we'll see uh, going forward in Solana. This is another clip uh, talking about a social app. It's called Buddy Link within the game. And this is going to be important because this will, this will, I think, open up some very interesting opportunities for the development of Web3 gaming in the future. Listen in. We're seeing that businesses are spending 15K a month plus on all these types of engagement tools that they could really get started for free. You have referrals, that's our bread and butter. We have loyalty programs, battle passes that you've probably seen in kind of AAA games and things like that. All of these things engage users and keep them coming back and keep them looking for more. I really want to note that these, uh, these businesses charge a lot of money for their services. If you have to use multiple ones of these providers, you're then starting to manage a bunch of different API keys. You have to kind of contact them all the time. You're talking to their tech support. It's, it's kind of like a whole mess. And so what we've done is we've simplified the entire thing, and we're really happy to present Buddy, which is a next generation referral marketing hub. So what we're really trying to solve here is getting people into Web3, getting them in safely, uh, but then also trying to get projects to work together. So now if you refer one person to one system, they are now monetizable across all of those systems. Or if it's your friend, you guys can earn rewards from each other across all of the different products that you use, be it a game, be it a marketplace, be it a DeFi exchange. If uh, Joe and I both decide to actually refer Calvin, we can split that attribution 50-50. We're very happy to introduce one of our, our very close friends, the founder and CEO of Star Atlas, Michael Wagner. We launched StarPath in 2022. It was a hybrid Web 2, Web 3 approach. Failed for a variety of reasons. But fortunately, we connected up with the team at BuddyLink earlier this year, and we were able to integrate a fully on-chain Web3 affiliate and referral system. The result of that relationship is just over the last couple of weeks, we've already signed up 2,000 new users. We've distributed over $150,000 in rewards to those users, and we've generated an additional $1 million in marketplace transaction volume on our marketplace. <laughs> And with that, we'd really like to introduce the final thing uh, today, which is our Buddy app. So you'll be able to share and earn on mobile everywhere you go, obviously debuting on the Saga, Play Store, and uh, Google Play, uh, and uh, the App Store. This could be big. And uh, obviously, within the game itself, the connection there, I think, obviously, is the, kind of the kickstart for where this tech is going to go. I want to talk about brand IP going forward with what Atlas is doing. Listen in to what Wagner said on this. No MMO is complete without a guild system. So in the very near future, we're going to be releasing our DAC platform. This is Decentralized Autonomous Corporations, the guilds of Star Atlas. Once again, this is a fully on-chain guild registration system that provides access to naming, your profile system, setting guilds' interests and objectives, uh, recruiting platform, and it also allows for member management, role setting, and permission setting. And entrepreneurs are able to build businesses using RIP, commercialize those businesses, and generate revenue up to $1 million without a single cent in royalties to us. Gallia ArtStation makes 3D printed models of our ships. Gallia Merchants, they produce apparel, swag, and other computer peripherals. And Dark Core Roasters, a Star Atlas-themed coffee brand. And just since October 3rd, we've already seen 16,000 downloads of our various programs. These are the people that are creating the extensions, mods, expansions of Star Atlas. So interesting IP conversion, because this also opens up opportunity for more revenue for Star Atlas. So it's going to be another way to kind of see those extensions of the brand happen in other industries. Now I want to leap over to other things that are happening there at Breakpoint. This is Peter Moore. Now, Peter Moore, you need to kind of understand who this guy is. Um, they get into some interesting conversations here, but this guy has, of course, I would say one of the best resumes out there in terms of just what's happening in digital gaming. Right now, of course, he's SVP of Sports and Live Entertainment at Unity, but he's also been Chief Operating Officer over at Electronic Arts. He was at EA Sports. Etc. You get the picture here. This is one of those people who pretty much set this industry in motion. I want to go to this next clip because this will surprise you a little bit. Listen in. From Sega, I then went to, EA, uh, to Xbox, moved up to rainy Seattle, 
and launch the Xbox 360. And not only the Xbox 360, but started driving Xbox Live. And I've lived through gaming being maligned, gaming being scoffed at, gaming being seen as boys in their bedrooms. I found this graph recently that shows you, I think, in one slide what I've been talking about. Look how small we were 30 years ago, and look at where we are today. I think that the key here, and this is where I hand the baton to everybody here, of what Web3, what the blockchain can do for gaming, and if you will, gaming 3.0. All right, so Peter seems to be all in here. So that, that's a big positive, especially with someone like his resume. Let's go over to what he's talking about. What is it going to take for really a disruption force in the industry around Web3? Listen in. I think it's very easy in retrospect to look at your career and say that you've had one of the best careers someone could imagine. I remember every detail of it. John Riccatello, the CEO at that time at EA, said, many of you will not be here next. He literally said, many of you will not be here next year because you're going to find different jobs. Because the future is not for you. Unless you feel uh, you're with me that we're going to move away from the retailer being our customer to the gamer being our customer. And that's going to be painful. And we're going to get tremendous abuse from our retailers who see us as abandoning them and, and putting them into bankruptcy. Look, I launched the Xbox 360 in Toys R Us. And, and I always remember when I joined EA from Xbox, my options were at $53 a share. 18 months later, the stock's at 10. <laughs> so you go, did I make the right move? But it was brutal. You're basically talking about removing the middleman there. The retailer was the middleman. This yeah. is a lot of what blockchain gaming yeah. is about now too, that sort of process. We got fudded yeah. fear, uncertainty, and doubt by the Sony PlayStation 2. Now at Sega, we couldn't sustain it. Now, Microsoft had a few tens of billions of dollars more on the balance sheet. In sitting down with Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer, they were petrified, bluntly, that Sony was going to own the living room. Microsoft will be condemned to the office. And, and if you recall, we said, you're going to pay $5 a month for Xbox Live, and we know the PlayStation Network is free, but we have a better experience. And gamers flocked to that Xbox Live experience, the utilization of blades, the, the ability to play your music and look at photos and have this amazing collegial social experience with fellow gamers. This was a fascinating time where we actually bought a piece of Apple, yes. if anybody remembers yes. this, to keep Apple in business so that we had a competitor. Interesting stuff. I think this is a lot of history that a lot of people know about where gaming has come from. Now we're seeing you know, icons like Peter that have really seen the future. And they understand it because they've seen the framework of how ga gaming growth has been. And it seems, and it's always what I say, you know, it always, future and tech always repeats itself. Definitely happening here. I want to jump over to another topic here. This is uh, Drip on Solana and how they're going mainstream. This is another tool set that's being released and talked about there at Breakpoint. Listen in. And how many wallets does Drip have right now? Uh, I just tweeted a little bit ago. I think we just crossed 800,000. 800,000, wow. So 8x. Yeah. And so what made them come to Drip? Because there's uh, a lot of different protocols that are onboarding users in different ways. So what do you think attracted them to your product? Because it starts at free. You, can, you don't need tokens. You don't need a KYC. Um, you sign up with a phantom wallet or a backpack wallet. Uh, we kind of changed the value prop a lot from you know, maybe trading to collecting and just enjoying content the same way you would anywhere else. This was a, a tweet by them over Breakpoint. Next up, Matador announcing the um, Asset Dash drip channel. This is just how you can guys uh, can go into this and start kind of engaging on this. If you're into NFTs, this is one of those that would be interesting to you guys. Um, I want to jump over to one more, and this is Mark Cuban talking a little bit more about the strategy of NFTs, whether it's a collection or is it an investment play. Listen in. Everybody losing money in NFTs. Why are you still here? You know how many other industries have sucked? Microsoft was selling for hundredth of what they sell right now. I'm gonna say it to you for the people in the back. Don't speculate. You know what happens to speculators? They get their ass handed to them. I can stare at my mutant punk all day long because I collected it. I'm not paying attention to all the things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis and you shouldn't either because someday we're going to turn around and you know what you're going to say to yourself? You're going to say to yourself, 
I should have bought those damn NFTs when they were next to nothing. All right, that's just kind of a, a joke at the end there. But, you know, the point being, as I think is clear, is that, you know, right now the NFT market is pretty much imploded. We've seen that across all sorts of securities, investments. I mean, maybe some of you own Peloton out there. Maybe, maybe some, of you, some of you guys own some of these stocks that have cratered as much as 120% in the last two years. So that's kind of where we are with the NFT market. I want to get over to just to, since we covered Atlas so much, just to show you guys the impact on Atlas, the token. If you guys are out there, uh, maybe looking at this one, pretty heavy movement here in just a very short period of time. Nice little move right here, that just at the base of that wick right there at 96%, just in a matter of a handful of days. So that's the kind of movement that is happening from the effect of what is Breakpoint. We'll have one more video coming out tomorrow that I think uh, will give you guys even more insights to the finality of what Solana is doing in the structure of moving forward, because there's a lot, a lot happening there. So make sure and stick around for those. Check back to some of our other videos if you really want to catch up on what's happening over at Breakpoint. And of course, if you're, not, if you're not in our Diamond Circle, get in now. It's one of the best places you can get additional content. And if you guys want to catch me on X, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.